You are the life, Lord God. And no one comes to the Father except through union with you, Lord God. And to know Jesus is to know the Father. So we thank you, Father, that on this morning, Lord God, we are gathered in your name, Lord God, to draw closer to you, to have that relationship with you that you desire that we have, Lord God, to know you better, Lord God, to know who we are better, Lord God, because when we know who you are, we know who we are, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you that your word says, Lord God, in 1 John 5 and 20, and we know that the Son of God has made our understanding come alive so that we can know by experience the one who is true. And we are in him who is true, God's Son, Jesus Christ, the true God and eternal life. So we thank you, Lord God, that through Lord God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have eternal life, Lord God. And that, Father God, as we stand on, Lord God, this mountain of religion, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God, that we will know, Lord God, who you are, that we will have relationship with you, Lord God, that we will believe your word and know that your word is truth, that we will walk by faith and not by sight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your word says in John 8, 31 and 32, when we continue to embrace all that you teach us, that we will prove to be your true followers. For if we embrace the truth, it will release more freedom into our lives. So we embrace your truth, Lord God. We embrace your truth, Lord God, according to your word, Lord God, whereby we have more freedom, whereby we have more freedom, Lord God, to call on the name that is the name above every name, Lord God, to call on your name for healing, to call on your name for deliverance, to call on your name to be set free, to call on your name for prosperity, to call on your name for deliverance, to call for your name in unity, to call for your name in peace, Lord God, to call for your, on your name and hope, Lord God. Father, that relationship that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, our Savior, through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Dear the Father, just come with you right now to just to share the word with you and just give you all the things that you give us, Lord. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. It does not boost, boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It is not easy to anger. It keeps... It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. We love because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. Lord, I come with you with the family love, Lord, just the let people know that family love, regardless of his blood relatives, church members, just, this is love. There's, there's no boundaries with love, Lord. The things that you have us to do, to be with, to love each other, to love one another, Lord, it's, you first love the church, and you want us to love each other like you love the church. So Lord, just put it inside us, give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, and the clarity that love covers all things. No matter what happens, what goes on, you always go back to love. Love is the main ingredients to make the world go. It makes your family go. Love your family as the church, as God loves the church. And understand and know that there's no family. People think that blood is the only family, no. Church love is just as good as blood love. And sometimes it's even better than church than blood love. Because you're loving because God loved us first. And we want to share and be as God was. We want to be like Jesus and love one another no matter what happens, what goes on. Have that agape love. The agape love that you love no matter what they do, how they do it. You don't, you don't understand why they did it, but you just know that you still love them no matter what they do and how they do it. 
And I pray for all these mighty names in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will trust in the Lord all my days. I'm going to lift your hands in the sanctuary. I'm going to trust in the Lord always. Oh, yes, I will. I will trust in the Lord all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I will trust in the Lord always and I'm gonna say yes Lord yes yes Lord oh yes I will yes 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 Lord Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Papa. Thank you this morning. Your word is the truth to the immortal, eternal, invisible Lord God our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thou who rules and reigns through your people, we thank you this morning that you did not let tonight, last night, be our last time in your presence on the Berto Pusha upon this earth. We thank you that we come boldly, courageously before your throne room of grace and mercy this morning to obtain the kingdom precepts, concepts, ideas, visions, dreams of businesses in the United States of America and all throughout the nation. We lift up before you, Lord God, according to your word in Deuteronomy 6, 5 and 11, Lord, through 5 and through 11, Lord God, you said, so you've given us houses, land, businesses, Lord God, that we didn't even build, even cities that we didn't been real shuku, that we did not even build. So this morning, Daddy, we come laying down before you businesses. In this hour, we know that nothing is a surprise to you. It might have shocked the world, it might have shocked the people, but it didn't shock you. Mm. So we come now in the name of Jesus to call the north, the east, the south wind to bring in the businesses that is of the kingdom. So Father, we ask as it is in the kingdom of heaven, according to the businesses of the kingdom, let it be down here on earth in the name of Jesus the Christ. Whose we are, we belong to you. You called us, you chose us, even by our name, even by the identity, even of our blood cells, Lord God, even of our DNA. You called us. We stand, Lord God, before your throne room of grace and mercy, inquiring of you. Give us the knowledge of where the business is at. Then give us the wisdom how to apply it on a daily basis. Then give us understanding of those that we need, managers supervisors, directors, CEOs, VPs, in the name of Jesus. We call those things, according to Romans 4, 17, we call those things to be not as though they were in our businesses, in the businesses that you give to your ecclesia, in the businesses that are in the nation, in the businesses in the United States of America. We call those businesses to be not erosa, to be not as though they were. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we call the vision to format. We call it, Lord God, to be created. 
we call the image and the display of it in the name of Jesus, in the heart, in the minds of the people. Then, Father, your word says, you, Lord God, woo, the dark riches you will give to those that know about it, that have the faith, and can call it to be. Lord God, that will cause your purpose and plan for the Marosa, for the nations to flourish, to rise up. We call forth men and women, girls and boys. We call them to rise up in the name of Jesus to Christ. We call them. Well, from the inside out, God, the substance, faith is the substance. We call forth the substance that's in the faith and the kingdom of God. We call you to manifest in the earth in the name of Jesus. Now, Daddy, you told us that you've already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So we want to thank you today that as we go about our daily habits, our daily meditations, our daily movement of Erush in the earth, the Lord, you will begin to form in our minds, in our cells, to generate, Lord God, those businesses. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, whether they be online or whether they be physical, you begin to cause them to rise up like never before in the name of Yeshua, whose we are, Father God. And we ask that you do it, that you get all of the glory. You are our God. You said, call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things. We call upon you for the great and mighty thing in businesses. We call upon your great name because there's no other name. There's no other name according to Ephesians 1 and 21 above the name of Jesus. So be it. Amen. Come on, y'all, let's lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's give God the glory. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I came got to give God the praise today. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but he put the breath of life in your body. And y'all look real good this morning. Come on, y'all. How many know that today is going to be an amazing day? How many know that today is going to be a blessed day? I sense something good in the atmosphere. That God is doing great things. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. We bless your name. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be. You might as well go ahead and decree it. The best day of my life. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be the best day. I've got my joy back. Oh, today I've got my life back. Oh, today I have my life. I got my life back. Yes, I do. Today it's gonna be hallelujah the best. Jesus, because I learned something a long time ago that God inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. So today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be the best day. 
the best day of my life. Today yes, it will. will be the best day, the best day. I have my joy back. Yes, I do. Today I have my heart back. Whoa. Today, yes, I believe yes. that today, yes. 
Yes, I believe that today. Yes, I believe. In spite of what it looks like, I believe. He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Sometimes it's not your faith. It's the part that you don't understand. So I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. So speak life, speak life, speak life, speak over it, speak life, speak life, speak life, speak over it, speak life, speak life, speak over it, speak over it, speak life, speak life, speak over it.
worship you, Jesus. We praise you. We lift you up, oh God. Fill us up, oh God. Fill us up the more this morning, oh God. You know exactly what we need this morning, oh God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. We will speak life over it. Hallelujah. We will speak over it this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Oh. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come feel my life in the inside, in the inside of me. Set me on fire in the inside, in the inside of me. Cause all I you to be glorified for you to be lifted high all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted high let praises rise Come on, y'all, let's him. from the inside from the inside of me, may you delight, you delight in the inside, in the inside, inside of me, Jesus. in the inside of me. Come feel my life, feel my life, fill it up, Jesus, till it overflows. From the inside, from the inside of me, of me. set me on fire.
God that's in you, I dare you to give him glory. We lift you up this morning. We lift you up. Yes, we do. We lift you up this morning. Yes, we do, Jesus. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory, Jesus. Yes. Fill us up, God. Fill us up, God. Fill us up the more, Jesus, with your love, with your joy this morning. You get the glory. You get the glory. Yeah. Cause all I want is for you. You be magnified. You be glorified. Cause all I want is for you. For you to be glorified. In whatever I do, God, let them see you and me. Let them hear you and me. Hey, let them hear you and me. Let them feel the love in me. Hey, that is you. Hey, we lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. Yes, be glorified. So that you may heal our land. So you may heal our land. We lift you up. We lift you up. Because all I want is for you. For you to be glorified. For you to be lifted high. All I want is for you. testimony this morning I dare you to just open up your mouth and sing with us come on all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted can we hear it out here come on all I want Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You get the glory out of our lives, Jesus. You get the glory. Hallelujah. All we want to do is glorify him. As we do each day of our life, we just want to glorify our God. We thank you for every benefit, every blessing he pour upon us each and every day. And we want him to be magnified in the earth because there's someone looking at you trying to find out what is it about you that make you have the demeanor that you have, that makes you be, have a smile on your face, to have you, whatever situation is going on around, you know that God has be glorified through our actions. But here's an opportunity for us to glorify God in, in a personal way. By giving, if you need an offering here in the sanctuary, raise your hand. The ushers will accommodate you. Those that are streaming, you can participate also by hitting the donate button. Uh, there's uh, different ways you can use Givelify, you can use Cash App, go on fpcnd.com. I want to read to you from Proverbs. It says, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. I'm looking for refreshing. Are you looking for refreshing? I want to be refreshed from God, from being used by him by being obedient in my giving. So we want to make sure that we are giving as God has blessed us with. We work hard throughout the week and we're blessed in a monetary way. We want to make sure we give what's due to God, which is that 10%, what he's blessed us with, allowing us to have income, have jobs, have means or resources. What is giving back was due to God. As it tells in Malachi, don't be a robber of God. Don't rob God of what's due to him. 
Give God what's his. Give God what's his. And watch him continue to bless you through your obedience and using what's, what's left over. So if you had an opportunity to prepare your gifts and offerings, as you please stand, because we're releasing to the atmosphere our faith affirmation, believing God what he's doing with us and through us through our obedience and our giving by us pouring out a little bit of ourselves back to him and in the kingdom work. So please repeat after me. I believe that I receive God's best on my seed sown today. I believe that because I'm a giver, God is raising others up to use their power, their influence to help me. Therefore, I believe that I am abundantly supplied spiritually, physically, and financially. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now in the hands of the ushers. God is good 
and he is worthy to be praised. There's a smile on every face, even though I cannot tell, because there's a mask. So y'all give me some smiling eyes. That means you smiling so big that I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> forever me and you, forever me and you. <laughs> God bless you. Come on, put those hands together one time for God. We love the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. What a wonderful day to be here for worship. And uh, we thank God for his grace and his mercy that endures forever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I am so excited about the God I serve. There is no other God like him. He is auspicious. He is bountiful. He is courageous and cool. He is dynamic. He is everything. He is fantastic. He is great. He is a healer. He is intelligent. He is just. He is king of kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is the mighty God. He is omnipotent. He is powerful. He is quick. He is righteous. He is super. He is terrific. He is undefeated. He is victorious. He is wonderful. He is zealous. He's a yoke destroyer. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Have you ever talked about somebody and got excited about them? We ought to talk about God and get, us, get excited about God. Amen, amen. We want to acknowledge uh, new members. And uh, we thank God for all of our new members on today. Amen. This, over this way. Um, we thank God for all of our new members and that the Lord is blessing us to grow. And those of you who have become new members online, thank you for being members of the Fervent Prayer Church family and the First Hour Prayer family. We thank God for you too. Amen. So glad uh, for uh, Melissa at the new that doing our photography. She is doing an amazing job already. And we appreciate you. Uh, she's my kingdom uh, valley sister. <laughs> Moved here from Chicago. And so we're not strangers at all. I got a lot of wonderful brothers and sisters there in Chicago. And uh, certainly we thank God for all of our birthdays this month. <laughs> And uh, today's birthday, Tasha Tumblin, one of my, could you stand real quick? She's one of my kangoo bounce sisters. And uh, who else? Patty's birthday is today. And Patty is also um, a cook for our Christian school and daycare. And when I'm here, it's like being on a cruise ship because she is bringing food 24-7. And it's good, too. It's good. And uh, she believes in the old southern helping size. She's going to load you up. So I thank God for that. Um, he is so wonderful. We love you all. Um, we have some wonderful new members to acknowledge. Uh, Nichelle Smith's going to help us to do that. Hold on a second, because they got to make sure your mic's on. There you go. Testing. It wasn't on. You were doing fine. I was doing good. Okay. <laughs> good morning. As Pastor said, we are growing by leaps and bounds. And so this morning, right, we want to acknowledge our new members. Now, you.
you are the bo- you are the body of Christ and members individual certificate of membership to Fervent Prayer Church presented to Jashad Daniels. Amen. Amen. Make sure you get a picture of these tennis shoes right here. I'm on fire. That was a night. Now you are the body of Christ and members individual certificate of membership to the Fervent Prayer Church is presented to Courtney Vine. the body of Christ and members individual certificate of membership to the Fervent Prayer Church is presented to Tasha Tumbler. Tasha Tumbler. Happy birthday. Now you are the body of Christ and members individual certificate of membership to the Fervent Prayer Church presented to Melanie Smith. Now you are the body of Christ and members individual certificate of membership to the Fervent Prayer Church presented to Lorenzo Smith. the body of Christ and members individual certificate of membership to the Fervent Prayer Church is presented to Melissa Afanuqua. Yeah. So as you can see, our class is truly growing. Um, and these and are the children right here. These are your children, these, right? These are those, the Smith come children. on. Y'all want to come up? Come on. It's all about the family. And so we had other members that attended yesterday, so you can see that our class was pretty big, um, and it is growing. So congratulations to all of our new members. Thank you. Let's give God praise for. Don't leave. Don't leave. Yeah. They get my cue cards. See, I'm 53. Y'all leave. And then y'all be mad because I didn't announce it. <laughs> Don't leave. Amen. I got a good brain. So I just need cues. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um we have some messages. I've been in broadcasting over 20 years and um, I think that it's important even in ministry that you get the messages and uh, no, you probably don't want to handle that. I'll just put it, I'll put it in my pocket. I wonder what we're going to do with all these masks when this is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we have some messages um, that we want to share with you, and we'll be back after these messages. Or maybe not. I do have one to share. 
um, Pastor D. We have fervent feeders, and we'll have a table set up after service to pick up your bags for supplies for meals to the needy, families for Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving will be different for families in Marion County and the state of Indiana across the nation, but people still want to eat on Thanksgiving Day as well as giving thanks. We will also give out bags this Wednesday, the 18th, or you can pick them up at the church from 9 to 5 p.m. You will need names of families who need a bag for Thanksgiving. All bags must be returned next Sunday that uh, in the, that day so that we will be giving out the bags. Thank you for writing this in cursive. <laughs> you, could, you could read it, out, I'm sure. But it was good. Thank you. Very well done. All right. Please be sure uh, to wear your mask uh, during the service unless you're ministering from the platform. It's so important. We have people who come, and uh, sometimes people might get nervous um, if you don't have your mask on. So, And it's a uh, mandate in Marion County that um, when you're in a public space, no matter where you go, go into a store, you come to worship, uh, you have your mask on. We are people of faith. We believe we trust God. And we're not going to tempt God either, right? So we protect each other, and we're looking out for one another by wearing our mask. And I want to thank you as your pastor. Thank you so much um, for wearing your mask and social distancing. Um, I want to thank the deacons uh, for making sure that everything is arranged in such a way from the parking lot to the pulpit. Uh, with, uh, Brother Jones did such a good job with the parking lot. Deaconess Hobson does a tremendous job with her team with sanitizing everything and keeping everything clean. We've been doing that before they shut everything down. And she was on top of it then. She's on top of it now with DeCarla and the entire team. Let's give them a hand clap. We appreciate it so much. A virus don't, a virus, uh, don't stand a chance on these doors. <laughs> they clean them so fast. So we, we thank you so much and for uh, Deacon Reggie um, for spraying the disinfectant. When you come in, we have missed and disinfected all over the place. We're doing everything we can um, to do what needs to be done. So we're going to, did we ever get the uh, messages together? Uh, so we're not going to have those. Okay, so we'll have them next time. Um, before I preach, Brenda's going to come and pray. Let's say amen to her. Father, we just thank you this morning for your word and your um, pastor here at the Fervent Prayer Church. We thank you and we praise you that his tongue is a tongue of a ready writer. And we thank you, Father God, from the inside out that you will use him, Lord God. Speak through him, Father, that that you put in him, that before he ever entered into his mother's womb, that you prepared for him to speak on this day in the kingdom, and you, Lord God, will get all of the glory. We thank you that his feet are shod and prepared, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And Father, we thank you that his heart loves you and love your people. Now, Dad, in the name of Jesus the Christ, go ahead, get all the glory. Get all the glory. Endow him, Lord God. Fill him up. Let him know, Father God, that what he's doing is not in vain. Let him know, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you are with him and that, Lord God, he's your son. We thank you for your king today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Just real quick, stand to your feet and help me sing this song. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget.
never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Put your hands together. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Never, never. Come on, help. Never, never. Come on, congregational. Never, never forget. 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 Never. Never forget, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never, never. Never, 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 never. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Somebody shout never. Never forget. Amen. Um, you may be seated. the harp and bowl opening prayer trust God tell yourself trust God we're trusting God hallelujah glory to God I also want to uh, give God praise and glory for the community outreach that Deacon Smith did on yesterday at the R&B clothing store. And all that uh, was done, all that was given away there, thank you for the outreach. It was wonderful. And we're asking God's blessing on that store right there at 38th and Midhoffer. We're asking God to increase it and make it a staple in the community. As you well know, uh, Indianapolis, or Marion County, I should say, in the state of Indiana and other cities across the nation have made adjustments with regard to COVID-19 and um, have pulled back and more restrictions, which is not surprising. One of the things that was very encouraging that I read in the national news media is that um, they have a vaccine 
that has proven to be over 90% effective. And before you count out vaccines, because I know people have a problem sometime with vaccines and medicines, if you, if you take aspirin, NyQuil, and some other medicines, they were all created by somebody, but God gave them the knowledge to synthesize different ingredients to help make a difference in the body. And so as I was praying about COVID-19, and let me say in Marion County, although the infection rate has increased, according to Dr. Virginia Kane, the increase in deaths remains stagnant. I think we ought to give God praise for that. I thank God that people who are getting the virus are not dying. Not, there are some, but not at the rate that it was. This is the year of stability and increase. Many have already increased and God is gonna stabilize us. And I was reading in the national news media, Pastor Hobson, the epidemiologist and lead health professional said, they never seen a vaccine um, work like that and get it together so quickly. And you may be suspect on that, but as a man of faith, I've been praying for that. So while others are suspect, to me it's answered prayer. <laughs> you lift up a light, lift up a heart, lift up a smiley face. So how should we be praying about this? Put Jeremiah 33 and 6 on the screen. I do have a lesson to minister, but I want to show you how to pray about this. And I hope that you will be joining with me in prayer about COVID-19. To pray that it leaves would not be accurate because the virus is what epidemiologists call endemic. It's like the flu virus. It's here. However it got here, it's here. So they say it's um, endemic, meaning that it's going to be around even after things start slowing down there are still people who will probably contract the virus. Are you tracking with me? But since it's a new virus, many of our bodies are not immune to it because it's new. So then a vaccine is helpful because it helps to cure people who may get the disease so here's how the Bible says we're to pray about things like this this is what God reminded me of in Jeremiah 33 and 6 I really wanted them to put it on the screen but I'll go to it Jeremiah 33 and 6 you got it okay let's read that all right let's let's, let's read it together one two three Behold, I will give it health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. That's the New Living Translation. The King James Version says that God will give us health and cure. That God will give us what? Health. Brother Brian... When, when God healed Hezekiah, God told the prophet Isaiah to go get a lump of figs because figs have medicinal qualities. And he said, go get a lump of figs. Now, prophetically, God says to the man of God, I'm going to extend his life 15 years. But you have the prophetic and then you have a lump of figs. 
that they put on the boil. So we talk about what was going on with Hezekiah. This boil had become infected and they didn't have the advancement uh, in medicines and things like we have today. Notwithstanding, he had that and he was going to die, but he prayed God extended his life. And so supernaturally, and this lump of figs put on the boil, he recovered. <laughs> That's Old Testament, right? So he says, I will give you health and cure. I'll give you health and healing. So when we pray the scriptures, we pray what? God, give us health and give us cure. Does that make sense? God, give us healing, heal us, and give us a cure. In fact, when Moses held up the brazen serpent, how many of y'all remember that? Theologically and in modernity, that's where, the, where they get the snake that goes around. You know, when you see the medical thing, that's where it comes from. Glory to God, I feel like running. I don't know why. I feel, <laughs> I will preach right here. So, so that's where they get it from when he held up the brazen serpent there. And, and, and everybody that looked at it recovered from being bitten by the snakes. And everybody that didn't, who were there, God's people, who did not receive it, died. Now, I'm not telling you to take the vaccine. Many of you all, or us, will not need it. But those who need it, we certainly don't want to cast dispersions on them. Because God said, I'll give you health and cure. I've been praying for the scientists. I've been praying for the uh, epidemiologists. I've been praying for all of them. And, and when I saw that, See, I pray and ask God to do things, and then I check the news media <laughs> to see the documentation of answered prayer. I didn't just start praying for health and cure uh, a few days ago. All the way back to March, because you got to stay on that. <laughs> In the New Testament, there's a man who's blind. And Jesus spits on the ground. And he takes the spit and the mud. Well, let's change it up a little bit. The saliva. Because <laughs> I may turn you off saying spit. So saliva. He takes the saliva and he takes the mud and he creates a salve. And by supernatural power and the salve, he puts it on the man's eyes. And he's now able to see. So if Jesus was against medicine and if Jesus was against vaccines, it, that was a good time to tell us, stay away from it. <laughs> I won't get too many amens, but I know what I'm talking about. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's, that's the answer to prayer. It, uh, so you remember that Jeremiah 33, 6. Now, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, we know that verse because that's an answer to uh, Solomon's prayer in 2 Chronicles chapter number 6. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, God says, I will hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and do what? So we're praying for health and cure, and we're praying for healing. And I have a great peace about what's about to happen and what is happening <laughs> that God has and is answering our prayers. <laughs> Glory to God. God can heal supernaturally, miraculously. He can heal by the laying on of hands. He can heal by a word. He can heal through saliva and mud. He can heal through figs. <laughs> and the old folk used to say, however you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Amen. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you for health and cure. And we pray, Father God, that which we understand is over 90% effective would be 100% effective. 
And Father, we thank you that even before the end of the year, we will see uh, a change, that we will see a major turnaround in the name of Jesus. For we are your people and, and, and we are seeking you and we are praying and, and we have turned from our wicked ways, God, and we are depending on and relying upon you. And we thank you for health and cure. 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 It's in the Bible. And we thank you. Lay hold on that text. That's a choice cut right there. I said lay hold on that text. Glory to God. Y'all better come and get me. I feel like running through troops and leaping over walls. I get excited about the word of God. That's all we got. <laughs> Father, I thank you for those who have contracted the virus, that they will not have chronic illnesses, that they will not have mental health disorders in the name of Jesus. For you are our healer and our deliverer. And we bind up fear and anxiety. And God, we thank you and praise you and magnify you. We are your people and we thank you for taking care of us. And Father, we thank you for every person who have had the disease already and recovered that you saw fit to keep them alive. And for that, we are grateful. And for those who had it and didn't know they had it, Lord God, we thank and praise you and magnify you for your grace and mercy. For you a good God. Second Corinthians chapter eight. Segue right into the lesson. We've been talking about the grace of giving. And God loves givers. And in Second Corinthians chapter number eight, we are encouraged to excel in our giving. And this is the foundational text for this teaching and preaching. Moreover, brethren, beginning verse 1, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. And a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring, verse 4, us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So, verse 6, we urge Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. Titus was tasked with completing the grace of giving in those who were giving. And I said last Sunday, I'm your giving coach to help you give like God wants you to give. So you can be blessed like God wants you to be blessed. Verse 7, but as you abound or increase in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. So we are to increase in our giving. If you have been a no giver, become a giver. If you have been, become or are a giver, become a tither. Tithe means tenth part of. And if you have been a tither, then become an extravagant giver. And that is a grace that you grow in. Because many people, when they start out in their giving, they, they just don't automatically uh, have the faith to start tithing or to give beyond the tithe. And if you were here on Wednesday night or if you were watching on Wednesday night, and those of you watching the replay, you heard me say that as a result of pastoral oversight, and I've been pastoring a long time, 25 years, and I have rarely seen people give an offering commensurate to the tithe. So then if somebody makes $1,000, I have rarely seen somebody give $100 in tithe and then $100 in an offering. You see, the tithe is a very pediatrics of giving. 
And it's, it's, it's something that we start out in. That's where we start growing. We, we start growing up to that. And I encourage you to start in that, but maybe you have to grow in that and grow up to that. And then when you become a tither then you say, well, God, I trust you with everything that I have. And then you go into extravagant giving. And that's where God wants us to be. In fact, God wants to have access to it all. <laughs> he wants us to be willing to give it all. There was a young man, he was a rich young ruler, and the scripture says that uh, he came to Jesus and wanted to know what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus said, go sell all your stuff and distribute it to the poor. The proceeds distribute it to the poor. And he went away sorrowfully saying, I cannot do that. He was a leader in the church and he was very wealthy. He had everything that he needed. But when Jesus placed a demand on everything he had, he said, I just can't do that. See, Jesus doesn't have a problem with you having money. He doesn't have, have a problem with you having nice things. He has no problem with that all, at all labels. He don't care. God don't care about that. You can have as much as you want. But when he puts a demand on it all, he wants to know, does he have access to it all? And if he asks you to give it all up, that you will be able to say, yes, it's yours and still be happy about it. When you're growing in your giving, it's easier to give God what's due God. Jesus says, give me a coin when he was asked the question about paying taxes. He says, give me a coin. And he holds up the, the coin and he says, whose inscription is this? And they said, Caesar. He said, give Caesar what's due Caesar and give God what's due God. <laughs> so when we get paid, we are obligated to pay our taxes. I didn't get, I didn't get any hard. <laughs> we, we're obligated to do that. I pay my taxes. I'm a pastor. I'm self-employed. I'm an entrepreneur. I pay my taxes. Um, that's due the federal government, the state government, and local municipalities. You got to pay that. And then the other side of that is give God what's due God. Now the federal government, the state government, and the local government, they just take it. And sometimes uh, if you're self-employed and it's on you to pay it, sometimes you might forget to pay it when you get paid. Because when you get the gross income, if you're self-employed and somebody, you know, at the end of the year, you made $50,000 and now you got to pay tax on that. And if you have not saved for that, that's a whole lot of cheese. <laughs> but give God what's due God. So if you think of it on those terms, that is due God. And I'm not giving it grudgingly. Because guess what? If you give it grudgingly, God really don't want it. But the Bible says we're not to give grudgingly. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in Corinth. He said, don't give grudgingly but because God or of necessity, don't give grudgingly or of necessity, not grudgingly or because I need something. So God, I'm going to give to you because I need a car. I'm going to give to you because I need a house. I'm going to give to you because I need this or I need it. No, I'm giving to you to honor you. I want to do it because the Bible says God loves the cheerful giver that I'm happy to give. When it's worship and giving time, because it is worship, when it's time to give, I'm excited about it. Oh, thank God. And, and, and if I got to give more, that means God bless me with more. <laughs> How are you going to praise God when, you, when you're tithing and giving off of 50000 a year? <laughs> How are you going to praise God and give God praise and bless him when you're tithing off 150000 a year. How you, and, and some of y'all, God going to raise you up to $1.5 million a year. How you going to praise God when you, when you cash app and I think you can cash app. <laughs> Listen, God could drop an inheritance in your lap of 
$2 million. And you don't dare want to come and give God $2,000 off $2 million. When he took you, he, he'd take you from making $350, $400 a week to putting $2 million in your pocket. Or, or a lawsuit you got out. And you waiting on a lawsuit. And God causes that thing released. And you get $10 million. And God said, all I'm asking for is a million of that. And you're going to still have nine million left. Well, after the government and the state and local get done with it, you still have a few million left. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to be prepared to know what to do with it. When I was working at Valley Kingdom a few years ago, I was the, uh, the uh, chief administrative officer there. And when I got my first check, Apostle H. Daniel Wilson can confirm this. Because see, I, I, I've been self-employed for so long that I didn't have an opportunity to do this, Sharita. When I got my first check from Valley Kingdom Ministries International, I signed the back of it and gave it as a first fruit. Because I said, I don't get this opportunity very much at all. I took the whole check and I gave it as a first fruit offering. <laughs> and God has blessed me. God blesses me because he know that I'm going to do the right thing with the holy thing. When I was in Chicago, I was blessed to be out with, uh, it was, I think it was like five or six apostles around the table. An apostle let me come to the dinner and they went to this steakhouse. And I was in a position to pay for the whole meal and I did. And apostle John Eckhart, he said, if I knew you were going to pay for the whole meal, I'd have got a bigger steak. <laughs> in jest. I was putting seed in the ground. Ain't no way you can sow into the lives of five or, six, five or six apostles and that seed not bring a harvest. And some of us are so tight in our giving that God really can't give you what he really want to give you. Thank God for cash app. I cash app my mentors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I think about my mentors in the faith, men of God that I admire, I get the cash app out and I'm pressing and I don't give less than $100 because that's rare. It is rare for somebody to give you some money. If you want to know the barometer of somebody's heart, check their pocketbook. Because where a man's treasure is, there, where his, there will his heart be also. You give to what you love. I know my wife's going to buy me something for Christmas. <laughs> I have a theme every year. And her budget is whatever she wants. If I can't get the real thing, I get, I get something, I get a reasonable facsimile thereof. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when you love somebody, you open up your heart and your hands. You can't keep saying you love me and you won't ever give me nothing. You miss my birthday, you miss anniversary, you miss Christmas, Valentine's Day, and you love me. Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, I'm preaching. And you say you love God? And you give God pennies? You toss God a, fruit, a few crumbs? And God done broke you off? And they hired you and you didn't have all the qualifications? But it was, they said it was something. They said, well, we had a lot of applicants, but there was something about you. 
that God turned the heart of those who had the power of the pen towards you and gave you favor and gave you a job that you really weren't qualified for. But you didn't qualify through normal means. But when you gave your life to God through Jesus Christ and you were faithful in the giving of your time and your talents and your treasures, then God caused heaven to smile on you and gave you what you needed and desired. Won't he do it? I'm still getting mileage off that seed. Every time I get a chance to be a blessing, I want to be a blessing. Amen. Go to 1 Kings 17. The test, the trust, and the testimony. The test, the trust, and the testimony. 1 Kings, 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17. When you're working out, I was doing some treadmill work with Peloton instructor. You know, Beyonce signed on with Peloton. Peloton excited about that. I suppose I'd be excited if she endorsed me too. And the instructor says, when you're running, don't run with your fist balled up because it impedes circulation through the body. You know, when you're running, you have a tendency to ball your fist up, but, but run with your hands kind of out like that so the blood can flow, flow freely, so the blood can flow freely through your body. Isn't that interesting? That if we ball our hands up to God, it doesn't allow his anointing to flow. See, it's not about receiving, it's about giving. For God so loved, Jamie, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. Come on, is that what it says? For God so loved the world that he did. What did he do? He gave. He, what did he give? His only. He gave his what? Only begotten son. That whoever so whosoever believe on him shall be saved. Look at the power of that gift. Untold millions have been saved because of what God gave. One of the best things that you've ever given God was your soul. When you give your life to God through Jesus Christ, it causes blessings to start rushing to you from everywhere there are blessings coming to you man that you have not even received yet that's the reason why you always want to keep yourself in a position to receive what god has for you the blessings that god is pouring into your life the clients and and the contracts that god is moving towards you they existed well before you gave your life to jesus christ and when you do what god wants you to do in the way that god wants you to do it and you remain a generous person then you will never be without what you need it is my understanding in science that the light we see today has been traveling <laughs> this way for millions of years. And by the time you see it, that wasn't the time that it could be seen. That it took time for that light to make it to where we could see it in the sky. That that light came from somewhere. And there's still light coming from other places. So we can see it. And I decree and declare on this morning that there are blessings headed to your life. Things that you have not even seen yet. That are headed your way. 
And if you stay in right relationship with God and keep doing what God wants you to do and keep remaining faithful to God, no matter what has happened, you're going to see what God said. The first thing it takes for us to understand is that we're going to be tested in the area of our giving. In, sec in 1 Kings 17, verse 8, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Before Elijah, Melissa, ever got there, God had already commanded someone to take care of him. <laughs> oh, I wish y'all could lay hold on this. That before I get to the interview, God has already commanded, not asked, he's already commanded them to hire me. Man, if you can lay hold on this text, it'll change your life forever. No matter where you go by faith, no matter what you do by faith, there are people that God have already commanded them to take care of you. There are people going to help you. You haven't even met them yet. People going to bless you. You, you. you don't even know their name yet. I made a phone call on Friday and I was talking to the fellow on the other end about some things and he said, we were just talking about you. <laughs> he said, we were just talking about you a couple of days ago. And then I called and they had already been talking about me. About some things that God's going to do with me, for me, and through me. <laughs> that's not confirmation. That's a witness. See, the confirmation is on the other side of that thing when I go to the testimony. <laughs> because God said I will confirm my word with signs following. But God will send you witnesses. To attest to what he said about you. And he said, I have commanded a widow to take care of you. And my question of the text is, God, why would you command somebody who don't have anything to take care of the prophet? Because it wasn't Elijah who really needed it. It was the widow who needed it. So God commands a widow who is in need of a miracle to take care of or sustain Elijah who represents ministry. Elijah represents ministry in the earth or Elijah represents that which belongs to God or who is working for God. So it matters what you give into. It matters what you sow into. Are you tracking with me? And so God says, she's going to provide for you. So verse 10 says, he arose and went to Zarephath. The number 10 is God's number for deliverance. If you really want to get your deliverance, you got to move when God say move. See, Elijah was at the brook Cherith. And while he was at the brook Cherith, the ravens brought him bread and meat. And the brook gave him fresh water. But at some point, the brook dried up and the ravens stopped coming. But God always has a plan for your necks. But when God gives you a plan for your necks, you got to be ready to move. <laughs> because really receiving miracles and more from God depends on your faith in him to move when he says move. But we get stuck on stuff and we get stuck on people and we get stuck in things that when God says move, we want to stay in what we were in. Well, God said the blessing is still there. You may not get it, but it ain't my fault. When I open the door, you got to move into it. If I close this door, walk out that door and walk into the next open door. How many of y'all just have one door in your house? You got rooms in your house. Even if you got a, a one bedroom apartment, you got a door in, a door out, 
and doors into different rooms. And I decree and declare that you have access to all the doors that God is opening in and for your life. The test, the test, brother Kenny, the test is will you move when God says move? So God tells Elijah to go to Zarephath and he's got to trust God to go to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, just like God said. And he called to her and said, please, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Now, this was not a hard thing. This was the test. This was not a hard thing. And, and as she was going to get it, see, she, she was obedient, Monica, when he said, go get me some water. See, some of us, we don't even pass the first exam. <laughs> the first exam is just go get some water. And she turns to go get, get the water in the cup. Now we know if you give the prophet a cup of water, you'll receive a prophet's reward. So she already got the prophet's reward because her intent was to go get the water. And God knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. So she was already set up to receive the blessing. And, and now the test of her obedience and the test of her willingness, she could go to the next level. And many of us are ready and we want to level up, but you can't level up until you pass the first level. <laughs> and she turns to go get the water, but then he takes it to the next level. And he says, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, now, he says, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. It is in your power to bring me some bread. Now, in its immediate literary context, it was go make some bread and bring it to me. But prophetically, it's this. It's in your power to give God what he says for you to give. But the test is, will you give it? Somebody say the test. Now, she says in verse 12, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little, a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. That's where she was in her faith. She had already processed through her mind, this is the last meal. I'm gathering sticks and me and my son are gonna have our last meal and die. But now we move from the test to the trust. Here it is in verse 13. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. So first of all, make me a cake and then do it for your son and yourself. So you mean to tell me, I just told you, pastor, that this is all I got left? And you telling me to trust God and give an offering? You must be out of your mind. She said, we gonna eat this and we gonna die. Pastor Tomiko, come here. And, and bring your bag with you. That's a nice one too. <laughs> yeah. So now we move from test to trust. 
Are you tracking with me? Trusting God with what you have in your power. And he says, he says, make me a cake first. In other words, you got to trust God with what you have. Now, it was in her power to give what she had to the man of God. Give me your purse, please. Ooh, that's a nice one. Heavy, too. One, two. Now, she didn't hesitate. And she don't know what I'm going to do with it. I mean, if, so, if it's some cash in here, I could just distribute it to the whole congregation. But now, if she didn't know me, and if we were not in relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ, ain't no way she would have gave me this bag. This ain't no purse, this is a bag. Folk got purse on hand, nothing in it. This is, this is a real thing here. No, 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 no. You're not going to give it. And, and she's a military woman. <laughs> she, she know how to get you, you know. She know how to get you right. But she trusted and gave the whole thing. And now with folded arms waiting and saying, what we gonna do next? And that's how we are, right? So, so now that she trusted, because you know what's in the barrel? That widow woman, her son's life is in the barrel. Her future is in the barrel. Her life is in the bag. Her posterity is in the bag. Everything is in the bag. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we so used to going to get the bag that we don't want to give the bag. And don't get so caught up in going to get that bag. Don't y'all don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. We had 38th and Midhoffer. No, you, you, you want to go get that bag? No, give the bag. And then she, she went, she made the cake, and she came back and gave it to the man of God. And here's the testimony. The scripture says she, he, and her son ate many days in the midst of a global famine. She, he, and her son, Pastor Amos, ate many days. It was because she passed the test. It was because she trusted God that God then did something supernatural in the barrel. And my prayer for you and my prayer for you is that God will do something supernatural in the barrel. That God, I come to give you everything I have. That God, I come to give you everything that I know. And according to your word, just like you did it for the woman who had the, the last in her jar and the last in her cupboard and made the cake by faith and this walk that we're on we have to walk it by faith and I decree and declare that you will pass the test going into the last part of this year and that you will keep on passing the test to say God I'll give you everything I have I may not have much but I'm going to give you everything I have in the Old Testament if you didn't have a ram to sacrifice before the Lord then you came before God with a handful of fine flour and here in the new and here in the Old Testament a woman who has a handful of meal and takes the last that she has and prepares it and gives it to the man of God and it released the anointing for something supernatural to happen in her life history said every time she went back to the barrel 
there was meal in the barrel. And every time she went to the cruise that kept the oil, there was oil in the cruise. Every time she went back to the barrel, there was meal in the barrel. And every time she went to the cruise, there was oil in the cruise. All I'm trying to tell you, when you're moving by faith and you trust in God with all that you have, every time you go, God said, I'll meet the need. Every time you call on me, I'll answer your prayer. I wish I could get somebody to give God praise in here and somebody to give God praise out there and say, God, I thank you for my testimony. The widow woman at Zarephath, she went from test to testimony. And I got a testimony that when you do things God's way, when you put God first in your life, when God has access to everything you have, he will always make a way. He will always open the door. I wish I had somebody here to shout back, won't he do it? I know that he can. I know that I know that he can. Is there anybody here that have been down to your latch, but God stepped in right on time and gave you favor with those who had the power of the pen? You ought to give God praise. 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 I heard the old folks say, Deacon Frank, he didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad he did. And I stopped by to tell you that God's not through yet. He's not through blessing you. He's not through opening doors for you. He's not through making ways for you. They had a global famine back then, and we got a global pandemic now. And the same God that took care of the widow woman at Zarephath and caused a miracle to be in the barrel, the same God that caused a miracle to be in the cruise of oil is the same God that is in 2020. And I wish I could get somebody to give God praise this morning and say, God, I know that I know you can do the same thing now. You can heal my body. You can save my soul. You can open a door in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do for you whatever you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll teach how you want me to teach. I'll give you my time and I'll give you my talent. And whatever's in my pocket, God, I'll give it all to you because I know that you all already made a way I know that you already fixed it and I'm not going to wait until I, I get the testimony to then give you praise but I believe I'll give you praise right now I wish I could get somebody to give God praise for what he finna do I wish I could get 10 people to give God praise for what he's about to do he's a mighty good God he can do anything when you're down to your last the power of God comes rushing in and I decree and declare a barrel blessing a cruise of oil blessing God I'll give you whatever you need of my time talent and treasure you gave it to me and I'll give it back to you somebody ought to give God praise Pastor Hobson, history says that she and her son ate on that for about a whole year. The famine was three and a half years for almost a whole year. Every time she went to the barrel, every time she went to the cruise of oil, God did a miracle. And I thank God that he's the same God that he's taking care of us. Ever since March of this year, ever since things got shut down, God has been faithful. Food on the table, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, open doors and windows of heaven being open for God people uh, no matter what we go through uh, and no matter how long we gotta go through it uh, I wish I could get somebody to give God praise uh, and say everything 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 is gonna be all right and you ought to tell yourself uh, and you ought to tell your family 
everything 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 is going to be all right if you put god first he'll work it out Glory to God. 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 We get ready to go. But Tasha, on your birthday, my, my little grandson, he get the orange juice. And the orange juice is about that big. And he got his favorite little thing he like to drink out of. That's about as tall as that. And he take the orange juice the other day, and he's trying to court, and he's trying to pour the orange juice in there. And the cup about to fall over. Some paw paw. I stabilized it. So he could fill it up. See, he's not big enough yet and strong enough to pour that heavy. Some of y'all need to get ready for heavy. See, God will give it to you so heavy that if you're not careful, everything will start falling apart. But God said, I'll stabilize it for you. Somebody ought to say, Paul, Paul, stabilize it. <laughs> and he filled it all the way up. He's pouring all the way up. And I started thinking, if he fill it up, I'm not going to get any. So I said, stop. And he stopped right there. Now, aren't you glad God is not like me? Because some people don't want you to have full. Because they're afraid they're not going to have any. <laughs> Tell somebody, don't block me now. Don't block me. I, I... And I said, Landon. Why do you feel it all the way up to the top? He said, Papa, so I don't have to keep going back to the refrigerator and filling it up. So I decree and declare for the sons and daughters of God, fill it up, fill it up, until it overflows. We bought it. He didn't pay a dime for it. His mother bought it. We didn't pay, he didn't pay a dime for it. But that didn't make him any difference. He got access to the door on the refrigerator. And he know that when he go to the refrigerator door and open it, that it's gonna be some cranberry juice or some orange juice in there. And not only is there orange juice and cranberry juice in the refrigerator, in the pantry there's some backup. So when what's in the refrigerator run out, we can go get some more. And I'm telling you on this morning that from now on, as a man of God, I prophesy over your situation. That every time you go to get what you need, 
there'll be more than enough so you don't have to keep coming back asking God for the same thing I love watching children because children know how to do it brother Brown. They, they know how to do it come on stand to your feet we get ready to go he got his orange juice full He like to sit right there. He get ready to watch his YouTube videos on the gamers. And he got his full cup of orange juice. And he got four slices of pepperoni pizza. And five slices of cheese sticks. And he ready. That he didn't pay a dime for. His pizza's warm, his cheese sticks are warm because he had access to the door on the microwave. And he, his, his orange juice is cold. Jamie, I used to be able to eat pepperoni pizza and orange juice at the same time. But as you get older, something happens in there. <laughs> I don't need that kind of warfare. But, but his system can handle it. And it's, it's cold because he got access to the door on the refrigerator. And he is enjoying his meal on our cost. He's not worried about the heat. He's not worried about the water bill, the electric bill, none of that. And the Bible says, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the father, Gabby, give good things? good things to those that trust him do you believe God if you're not saved raise your hand I want to pray for you say I'm not a believer I want to give my life to Jesus Christ and if you're not saved let us know we want to be a part of your spiritual growth and development if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit raise your hand I want to pray for you yeah, I see your hand. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is there to assist you, not to hurt you. If you want to be, be part of our church family, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If you'd like to join this church today, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If you raised your hand, meet me down front. I said I was going to pray for you. I want to do that. Amen. Amen. So I was going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Father, we thank you for your son, your daughter, for coming forward. We thank you for your love and kindness. We decree and declare every need met in abundance. You withhold no good thing from those who walk up right before you. Meet their heart's desire, every need. And those who are watching, do the same. And those watching the replay, in Jesus' name, amen. Michelle Smith, this young lady right here has some information to share with you all. If you all will go with her, thank you and God bless you. Amen. Did you get blessed today? Hallelujah. Did you get blessed? Click a praise. Lift up a like. Lift up a heart. Trust in God. Trust in God. Amen. I want the singers to come, if you would, please. If you would like prayer up on dismissal, I will stay here to pray for you. We love you all so much. Thank God for you. 
I'm going to pray and ask God's blessing on your week. If you'll lift that right hand, or if you're left-handed, you can lift the left one. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters here and those out there. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to worship and to praise you. You protect us in everything. We're trusting you. We pray for our state, our city, and surrounding towns. We ask, Father God, that you would continue to deliver us from the evils of COVID-19. For those who are sick, we pray for their recovery. We ask, Father God, that you would hasten this, the dissemination and distribution of the vaccine to our first responders, those who put their lives on the line to help other people, to our schools, Father God, our educators, and to people all over this nation, all over the world. We pray for the success of the cure in the name of Jesus. For your word said in Jeremiah 33, 6, you will give us health and cure, healing and cure. You healed Hezekiah supernaturally in a lump of figs. You healed blinded eyes with a supernatural salve. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing power. In Jesus' name, amen. Travel and grace be with you in good portion. Have a great week. Hey, FTC family. Thank you for joining us today. Take a look at what's happening this week at Fervent Prayer. Are you on Facebook? Tune into Facebook Live every week for our small group segments. Celebrity Saints, Mondays at 7 p.m. Divorce Care, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. And coming to you this month, Real Relationships, Esther and Eve, and Leveling Up with Landra. Be sure to like and follow us for updates on all of our groups. Do you have a special talent or skill that you'd like to use to uplift the Lord and his kingdom? Well, we want you. For all inquiries, please email administrator at fpcindy.com. Couldn't get enough of service? Or did you miss it? Never miss another service by downloading the FPC Indie app today. Available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. November is a new month, which means we have a new series. Introducing the grace of giving. Tune in online or worship in person Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. We're still believing in God for a COVID-19 vaccine, and we're asking you to stand in agreement with us. Until God moves, we must obey the laws of the land. So we are asking all indoor worshipers to wear their mask and practice social distancing at all times. Let prayer be the best part of your morning. Join FPC's morning prayer call every day at 6.30 a.m. Thank you to all that helped to make this year's Trunk or Treat a success. And thank you to all of our parents that brought their children out for treats. Get certified in prayer by attending the James William Jackson School of Prayer. Registration is just $65. Follow the link below to get registered today. Your prayer life will thank you. Returning this November, Children's Church, every first Sunday, ages 4 to 12. And Teen Ministry, every second and fourth Sunday, ages 13 to 18. Mark your calendars, ladies. Hello, FPC family. It's a new week, and here's what's new this week at Fervent Prayer. FPC has your mornings on lock. Join us every day at 6.30 a.m. for our morning prayer call or head over to Facebook to join us on First Hour of Prayer, Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. and 7.15 a.m. We're excited for the return of our children's church ministry every first Sunday for ages four to 12 and FPC's teen ministry every second and fourth Sunday for ages 13 to 18. Be on the lookout for the return of our small group ministries. 
This month, we return with a new look and some new faces. We'll be live every week on Facebook, featuring the highly anticipated return of Celebrity Saints, and coming soon, Total Men, Real Relationships, Esther and Eve, and Leveling Up with Landra. Be sure to like and follow our groups on Facebook for more information. Want to use your talents and gifts to uplift the kingdom of God? FPC is heavily involved with helping the community and a helping hand is always needed. For more information on how you can join one of our ministries, please email administrator at fpcindy.com. Did you enjoy part one of our new series, The Grace of Giving? Tune in live every week to see the series in its entirety. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. We are still having indoor worship, and until COVID restrictions have been lifted, we kindly ask all indoor worshipers to wear their masks and practice social distancing at all times. Coming to you this month on Black Friday, First Hour Prayer Live. If you enjoy First Hour Prayer, then you will love our live experience. Join Pastor Jackson as he takes you through two full hours of prayer and worship. Streaming live on Facebook Friday, November 27th at 6 a.m. And coming this December, the FPC Ladies Trip. Traveling from Indy to Cincinnati. Attending Papado's for lunch and the mall afterwards. Attendees will only be responsible for shopping and lunch expenses. Register today by emailing administrator at fpcindy.com. Coming to you February 2021, the James William Jackson School of Prayer. Registration is just $65 and spots are filling up fast. Secure your spot today by using the link below. Keep up with all things fervent by downloading our app today. Available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. We know this year has been filled with many challenges. If you or your family need support of any kind, please contact our member services team by phone at 317-898-2751, extension 104, or by email at administrator at fpcindy.com.